U.S. Army armor stealth tanks can be disguised. The military wants a vehicle that can withstand deadly anti-tank missiles, but without being too heavy. A two-man crew means a smaller tank, but it can also mean an overworked crew. Is two enough to fix a broken line or stay up all night watching the radio? Dodging enemy missiles like a comic book superhero might sound good, but if it doesn't work, the tank should better have thick armor to spare. The Pentagon's future tanks could be more like stealth fighters than armor giants like the current M1 Abrams. The military wants a vehicle that can withstand deadly anti-tank missiles, but without having to carry so many armor plates it can barely move. It must also have stealth capabilities to avoid detection. What will this future tank look like? The conceptual image of the Ground X vehicle looks like something from Star Wars, four wheels, no turret, a revolving gun, and a chassis so small it can't accommodate more than a crew or two. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, the Pentagon's future technology lab, has stated several ambitious goals for the Ground X vehicle. This should be half the size and weight of the current tank, but at twice the speed. It must also have half a crew, be able to traverse 95% of the terrain it encounters and have reduced sensor signatures. The latest M1A2 weighs 60 tons, is 26 feet long, travels at 25 miles per hour and has a crew of four. If DARPA is successful, the new vehicle will weigh 30 tons, be 13 feet long, less than the Humvee, traveling at a speed of 50 miles per hour and have a crew of two. The Pentagon has some radical suggestions for achieving this seemingly impossible dream. To improve mobility, prospective tank designers should consider the rapid change in omnidirectional motion in three dimensions. This sounds like a vehicle that can raise or lower the chassis like the notorious Swedish S tank. For added protection without heavy armor plates, the GXV may automatically evade incoming threats, indicating a computer-controlled system taking evasive action. DARPA also mentions active repositioning of armor, which could mean the tank automatically changes its orientation so that the thickest armor faces enemy fire. Or some sort of flexible armor plate that rearranges itself to deflect enemy projectiles. Of particular interest is DARPA's desire for signature management to reduce adversaries' ability to detect tank via visible light, infrared radiation, sound, or electromagnetic sensors such as radar. If this sounds familiar, it's because the description matches stealth aircraft like the F-35. Indeed, DARPA says the GXV project takes inspiration from a long line of experimental military X aircraft. The X-plane pioneered a number of innovations, such as the X-1 breaking the sound barrier. Most of the X-planes were never produced. One exception is the X-35, which evolved into the F-35. DARPA is trying to solve a dilemma that has puzzled tank designers since the first clunky armored vehicle that entered history a century ago. Designing a tank means juggling three factors, firepower, armor protection and mobility. The problem is that the emphasis on one factor comes only at the expense of the other two. Add bigger guns or more armor and the tank becomes slower and more expensive. Reduce armor protection and tanks become easier prey for enemy weapons. Historical trends have always led to more armor and bigger tanks. So the French FT-17 of 1918 was 7 tons, while the M1 weighed 60 tons. Sometimes extra protection works. Nazi Germany's Tiger tanks could repel allied anti-tank bullets such as ping-pong balls. But as DARPA points out, in the eternal race between tank and anti-tank guns, tank killers are currently winning. In the 2006 Lebanon War, Russian Cornet missiles destroyed armored Israeli Merkavas. Just adding extra armor won't work anymore. What makes the tank such a powerful weapon is that it is a mobile armored weapon platform. DARPA believes that the tank design has reached a stalemate where more armor turns the tank into a boring dinosaur. In fact, the M1 tanks the army sent from Germany to Bosnia during the 1996 peacekeeping mission had difficulty moving across many European bridges without the support of engineers. 
Heavier tanks are also harder for the Pentagon to deliver to overseas cinemas such as the Middle East. DARPA said the situation had become so bad that smart innovation was needed, to ensure the operational continuity of the next generation of armored fighting vehicles. In other words, unless the tanks benefited from some bright ideas, they would be too weakly armored to survive the battlefield or too heavy to even get there. Will technology save the tank? It's too early to say. What we can say is that every weapon, like every machine, is a compromise. The F-35 sacrifices payload and performance to evade detection, or so the Pentagon hopes. A two-man crew means a smaller tank, but it can also mean an overworked crew. Are two people enough to fix a broken line or stay up all night watching the radio? Dodging enemy missiles like a comic book superhero might sound good, but if it doesn't work, the tank should better have thick armor to spare. The F-35 comparison also raises more fundamental questions for the tank's future. Some critics have warned that the hundreds of billions of dollars the Pentagon is spending on the F-35 would be better spent developing drones. Even if that belief paints a pretty picture of drone capabilities, one wonders if the Pentagon's vision of a smaller, faster tank should be one that is unmanned.